If there is any one person or organization in Zambia that purports to stand on the moral high ground and without blemish or anything of that sort, it is Fred Membe and his Post newspaper. For all that Membe's Post does, business or otherwise, the picture portrayed is that of absolute purity. Yes, as pure and as white as you can imagine. Hello, Chanda Chimba III here. Welcome to Stand Up for Zambia. In one of my earlier episodes, I had indicated that with a bit of luck, I shall fill you in on some of the debts that members post or various institutions, including government. Well, that's exactly what you expect in this edition. As at 31st July 2010, members post either directly or indirectly owed various institutions a lot of money. However, some of the issues pertaining to what is owed are now before the judicial process and therefore cannot be talked about in detail. But as things stand right now, Members Post has taken the Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, to the Revenue Appeals Tribunal over 23,188,374,181 kwacha teningwe in unpaid taxes, and the matter is pending conclusion. I went to the Revenue Appeals Tribunal on the ground floor of Kambendekela House in Lusaka to check on whether or not Members Post has really taken the ZRA to the tribunal. Chola Shapi Mutambo is the registrar and she gave me the answer I was looking for. Yes, I'll confirm that um, we did receive uh, an appeal uh, with regard to the Post uh, newspaper. Uh, this was sometime in uh, 2009, towards the end, uh, to be specific, sometime uh, in December. We did have uh, an appeal Although I'm not in any position to comment on the contents or the details, I would confirm that yes, we have uh, received and currently this matter is, um, is uh, between the parties. Uh, they are trying to discuss and settle the matter out of court. This matter has had eight hearings so far, the last having been on 2nd September 2010 with the three-man panel chaired in an acting capacity by Lusaka Lawyer and Law Association of Zambia President Stephen Lungu, adjourning the matter sine die or indefinitely. Through its shareholding portfolio in the defunct Zambian Airways, Members Post owes the National Airports Corporation more than two million United States dollars in airport taxes, landing and parking fees. This again is before the courts of law so I cannot go further than this, at least for now. It is common knowledge how Members Post goes to town reporting on other people's debts, snooping in on every detail as if the paper operates above board and without owing any organization money. Well, that's a picture that Member has painted of himself and the newspaper he runs, always playing holier than thou in a drama series written, created, produced and directed by no other than Fred Membe, and of course, with him starring in the lead role. In my circles, this would be referred to as a skewed, blurred, out-of-focus picture not suitable for use. For those of you who read this newspaper, you will remember how they snooped up on me and reported my debts, which they always do with anyone they seem not to agree with. What I want you to know is that if I had not taken the position I have and started exposing the other side of this newspaper 
and other organizations and people that are forever criticizing the Rupia Banda administration, I can assure you that my debts would have been of no consequence to warrant the front page headlines by this newspaper. And who knows, perhaps I would have been the angel Gabriel. But that's members' post for you. Never want to be exposed or talked about, especially in the negative. What is disturbing is that this newspaper is in the forefront of telling people that government is not doing enough to provide for them. Member talks about governments, other peoples, and organizations' shortcomings, as if everything is roses in his cocoon. How I wish that people, especially public workers like nurses, doctors, and teachers, would one day march to members' post in protest at what may only be considered as misleading reporting, especially when it comes to developmental work that government is undertaking. So here are a few questions. What moral right does members' post have to, for instance, show pictures of patients lying on the floor in a hospital? What moral right does members' post have to distribute crude pictures of a woman in labor? What moral right does members' post have to call former President Frederick Chilwa a thief? In spite of all the obvious troubles, the almighty member and his newspaper hold on to the pen, using it and any given opportunity to criticize, insult, disparage, embarrass, and pull down anyone they choose at will, all in the name of freedom of expression. The truth of the matter is that not all is well with members' post. As I speak, he is struggling to pay workers' salaries, being behind by two to three months in some cases. You see, Membe has a pile of very huge stones which he throws at very thin glass, glass which even a roll of tissue may not break. It appears he forgets that he too lives in a glass house. If it was someone else or any other organization, particularly government, Membe would call in all sorts of headlines and editorial comments. There is also one thing I should share with you. Sources within Membe's post and his inner circle state that one very senior management official at this newspaper was purported to have been married to an American lady who was unhappy with certain things, and one day, out of the blues, she loaded all household goods in containers destined for her country. These sources further reveal that members paused had to pay the price of dispatching the containers to America. The aftermath of this, according to these sources, was that workers had to endure the pain of going several months without pay. But because of members' apparent vicious nature and character, very few dared to discuss the salary issue or even ask when they would be paid. Some insiders also reveal that Membe appears to be very crafty as they believe he hides behind certain people, registering properties and even bank accounts in their names. But one may wonder for how long the actual people being used are going to remain unknown in this global village. Members' post seems to have penetrated the corridors and offices of all public institutions they consider vital. Simply put, it is as good as this newspaper listening in quietly. Members and Malupenga's newspaper will indeed stop at nothing to penetrate any institution to get what they want. You may wish to know that certain confidential government documents have reached this cheeky and otherwise holier-than-thou newspaper even before they are signed. All this with the aid of some public service workers who are said to pass on documents in exchange for anything ranging from 500,000 kwacha to 3 million kwacha. Inside sources have revealed that the most that is known to have been paid for the otherwise unorthodox methods is 25 million kwacha. In one of my episodes, I met the wrath of Amos Malupenga, members managing editor and henchman number one, who boasted that the post has been fought by many people including heads of state, and they have lamentably failed. My interpretation of this is that all the people who are said to have been attacking members' post with all sorts of weaponry, including armor-piercing destructive sabots, heavy artillery and mortar shells to crush it have failed. But members and Malupenga's post 
know that a lot of things they have done have left them vulnerable. Yes, they know that nothing lasts forever, and perhaps it's just a matter of time. But they should face reality and stop pretending. One of the strictest unwritten rules at members' post is not to ask questions, which in military or security circles is keep what you know to yourself, or a situation where the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing, yet they are on one body. Simply put, others are paid, others are not. Life and work go on, and it's not for the workers to ask questions, period. One thing is baffling, though, the fact that members' non-governmental civil society allies like Goodwill Lungu's Transparency International Zambia and Simon Kabanda's Citizens Forum are conspicuously mute over the apparent sufferings of workers at this newspaper. Is it because they too operate in more or less the same way? Not really concerned about staff welfare? They seem to be operating from outer space for knowing the pace at which they react to and comment on issues they claim government is not doing enough on, it is really baffling that they have chosen to remain mute over the sufferings of workers at members' post. Right now, Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia is in a very serious quandary over staff welfare. According to a letter to the chapter president dated 30th August 2010, co-signed by Goodwill Lungu, a copy of which is shown here, staff have cried foul over certain fringe benefits that have been curtailed like salary advances. The letter reads in part, This is a passionate appeal to the Board of Directors from Transparency International Zambia, TIZ staff, following a board resolution made in 2009 that salary advances and loans should be abolished from being granted to members of staff. Reading through the letter, Telltale signs of bad governance in this institution are very evident. Yet Ruben Lifuka and Goodwill Lungu himself are on record criticizing government for anything and everything, what I may again simply refer to as playing holier than thou. Yes, one of this organization's famous choruses is good governance, for which they claim Rupia's administration is not doing enough on. You and I know that these NGOs are supposed to be partners with government in as far as development is concerned. Yet they fight government day in, day out, apart from spending a lot of time and money on workshops and seminars in expensive hotels, motels, and lodges. So what about good governance within their ranks? You may wish to know that, in fact, Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia falls far short on good governance. You see, these same NGOs thrive on collecting money all over the world in the name of you and I. Just how many people say in Mambolomoka in Western Province, Kayombo or Dikalonga in Northwestern Province, Makonkoto, Dengeza, Sinanjola or Sia Major in Southern Province, and perhaps even Lupia in Lopula Province and Nsama in Northern Province, nor of the existence of some of these otherwise vocal NGOs who purport to work for the people? These NGOs also use every opportunity to demarket and decampaign Zambia abroad. They solicit money on the pretext of fighting poverty and corruption. Yet they, together with other foreign sponsors, seem to be condoning members' presumed misdeeds. When I said I had taken a stand against all those that are forever criticizing the head of state and government, and in most cases insulting and using disparaging remarks, I meant just that, and I have no apologies to make. So because I made this very clear, members' post, in coalition with Goodwill Lungu's Transparency International Zambia, have perpetually fixed a reporter and photographer on my tail. All because I said I was going to go for and expose all people and organizations that were forever criticizing government. That's the crime I have committed. Frank Wallier, the disgruntled Catholic priest, also is said to be producing a documentary on me to sort of counter what I'm doing. But even in this, Members Post and Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia are heavily involved.
You will recall that members post carried a story that according to information from Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia, I had chosen to do these documentaries because I had been separated from the organization. This implied that I was fired from Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia. I was never, ever, ever employed by this organization. But for four years, I effectively presented and produced Transparency and Integrity Forum, a live phone-in program on the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, ZMBC TV and Radio 4, sponsored by Goodwill's Transparency International Zambia. I was merely a media consultant, contracted as and when there was something to do. In a future episode, I may share with you some inner dealings of this organization that claims to be fighting corruption. Dealings that may otherwise be deemed clandestine. But for members post and the holier than thou role he plays in what I have already referred to as his drama movie, it is clear he and his newspaper may be involved in some serious scam with somebody or a group of people. My suspicions are very high. But I have to end here. Be sure to join me next time with another edition of Stand Up for Zambia. I'm Chanda Chimba III. I'll certainly see you soon. Yes, as pure and as white as you can imagine. Hello, Chanda Chimba III here. Welcome to Stand Up for Zambia. In one of my earlier episodes, I had indicated that with a bit of luck, I shall fill you in on some of the debts that members post or various institutions, including government. Well, that's exactly what you expect in this edition. Either directly or indirectly owed various institutions a lot of money. However, some of the issues pertaining to what is owed are now before the judicial process and therefore cannot be talked about in detail. But as things stand right now, members post has taken the
If there is any one person or organization in Zambia that purports to stand on the moral high ground and without blemish or anything of that sort, it is Fred Membe and his Post newspaper. For all that Membe's Post does, business or otherwise, the picture portrayed is that of absolute purity. As at 31st July 2010, members post 